Okay, so uh, yeah, we're here to talk about Fedora Keynote, which has just been released, and it's the Fedora certified release party, so it's the right time to talk about that. So, quick agenda. Uh, well, I'll discuss where we are, what's coming like real soon, like in the next few months, and then coming next, over the next releases and things like that. Okay, so a quick reminder for those that haven't been following and for newcomers, uh, it's always fine to to get our, our minds updated. Uh, what's Fedora Kinoite? So essentially, Fedora Kinoite is uh, is a it's a variant of Fedora. So it's just Fedora but packaged in a little bit of different way. So it's attached to the KDE SIG, the special interest group, which maintains essentially all the KDE packages in Fedora. So it's built 100% from Fedora RPM packages. So what's in Kinoite, it's what's, what's in Fedora. There is no changes. Uh, the, the basics idea there behind this is that we are trying to, you are trying to create an immutable desktop operating system. So. Immutable does not mean that it does not change, but means that you control or it changes. It's just like the, the words we use for, for example, infrastructure. When you say immutable infrastructure, you do not you do not say that your infrastructure does not change. You say that you control precisely how it changes. And that's the same idea here. We want to make a desktop uh, variant of Fedora with the key data desktop where, uh, where we have a great control of all the desktop change. Uh, so yeah, as I've said, we're featuring the KDE Plasma desktop environment in its full glory. And uh, we are now officially released as part of Fedora certified, so it's party time. Okay, so what comes with Fedora? So uh, initially this is titled, Why Fedora? Because uh, outside of Fedora, folks might wonder why we want to base this on Fedora. And, uh, but here it's more about, okay, what's in Fedora right now in KDE Fedora that we, we take advantage of. And well, okay, we all know that Fedora gives us a stable and up to the software stack. Uh, and in Fedora, we've enabled Wayland by default, Pipewire by default, uh, systemd user sessions for KDE sessions. Uh, so all that comes in and it's even been available uh, for one release right now. So it's all in Fedora 35. Uh, we, uh, as the at the KDE SIG Special Interest Group, we try to follow the latest upstream release of all KDE. So if anything is out of date, uh, if it's not there already in Rawhide, it's in a sense, it's a bug. So it should be there. And we try to make sure we update on time. We are very active. Uh, we, we are active and we meet all um, weekly on, on Monday. So feel free to drop by if you want to work with us. All right, so what makes it different from a classic Fedora workstation installation or things like that? Well, we're based on RPM with 3 to manage the system. So we'll see what this implies, but essentially it's it's replacing the classic DNF uh, way of doing things and the way of managing packages by RPM with 3. We use Flatpak to manage applications. Uh, so we want to you will, most of the time you will want to use Flatpaks because it's a better user experience. And finally, you get containers with Podman, just like you would get on a regular workstation uh, installation. Uh, but here it's much more emphasized because uh, as the system by itself is, uh, is, is more control uh, regarding changes, you will want to run most of your tools, uh, development environment, and things like that in containers uh, via Podman. So in a sense, we are very, very close siblings, uh, sibling of Fedora Silver Blue, which is based on the same technologies. Okay, so yeah, the end goal of all that is to make sure that we provide a, an easy desktop experience for users. So RPM3 manages the system and makes the updates of the system basically a non-event. So when you update, you everything happens in the background. You just reboot into the new version and that's it. You don't have package conflicts or things like that, or broken systems or partial updates, none of that happens with our parameter suite. It's just like either it's there or it's not there. And you know the errors or the conflicts beforehand, you can resolve them quietly, tranquilly, um, at your own pace uh, on the common line or anything like that. And you, and you just reboot and there you go, you're into the new version. The, the updates are atomic, it's uh, like, they work as a single image. You can still modify a little bit of things in there, but essentially that's the idea. 
On top of that, we use Flatpak. So Flatpak makes installing applications really easy for users because they don't conflict with anything on the system. It's just essentially they are independent. And you can get that from several sources. You either get them from Fedora directly, you've got pure open source software from there, and uh, you can get a mix of proprietary or free and open source software from Flatpak too, uh, which makes this uh, really useful. And finally, you get Toolbox. So Toolbox builds on top of Podman, and you get to install any packages that are already in Fedora or any other distribution for that matter. And you run them in toolboxes and you get all the packages directly on your desktop. And it's a great way to work around the current limitations of the system. So the second thing we want to do is make things great for testers and early adopters. So all of those who wants to try the new version, try a new package, try a bug fix, uh, or even a regular user, which, for example, might want to try a bug fix of a specific package that has been made by the developer and provided as a file pack. And for that, uh, you, you can do two things. So with RPM3, you can, you, you can try new versions very easily because you just rebase your new version. If things don't work or if you just want to go back, you can easily go back to the previous one, and that's it. And with flat packs, you can do the same. You can install several versions at the same time in parallel, and there's no issue. You can even test like um, uh, versions from peers, for example, for those that have set up the GitHub action example here. And finally, we want to make this a very safe environment for developers. So the idea is when when you have RPM history, I can even maybe show this uh, if I have time in demo. Uh, you control all the system gets changed, so you control all you want to do development or change uh, specific packages for development. And this makes it really easy because if you screw up anything or if you just want to go back to a stable version, uh, you just reboot essentially your system and that's it. Uh, yeah, and you get the same experience with Flatpaks because as Flatpak don't mess up your own system, don't touch your system directly, you can just install any version of any library or any framework, even outdated ones when you need it for some applications, and that's fine. You don't have restrictions. You can use anything that's available. Okay, so that's like the state right now, what we have. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll make a short demo uh, right after. And uh, just just before that, I want to talk about what like the biggest things we have uh, missing right now, and which uh, will we will work on focusing focusing on work right like right now to to make this coming hopefully before Fedora thirty six. Uh, so the first thing, the first item is the update of Plasma, the new version of Plasma, which has been released a little bit while ago, like a couple of weeks ago short to approximately a month now. Uh, and as the KDE SIG, we follow the upstream releases. And so the latest version has already been in Rawhide for a while. We made the, essentially the releases as soon as they were available in Rawhide. Um, but for Fedora 34, 35 right now, we're still on the on Plasma 22 because of an unfortunate timing between the release cycles for Fedora and the release cycle for, for the KDE Plasma desktop. So essentially they're a little bit out of sync. So we had to block, essentially we got, we have to say, okay, we, we don't want to block the release. We'll skip this one and we'll do the updates right after. And that's fine. So essentially it will come as an update really, really soon. So in the coming weeks and uh, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, very soon. So we will come for Fedora 35 first and then for Fedora 34 next. And of course, as Fedora Kino is Fedora, don't forget it. And we'll just get the updates like everybody else uh, when it gets released to Fedora 35. All right, so we have a couple of known issues, and I'll try and focus on that uh, in the coming months. Uh, they all tracked into the Fedora KDE SIG tracker, which is linked there. Uh, you can find it easily from, from the KDE SIG page. Uh, essentially, they, they are not like big issues. Well, some of them are blocking for some users, and I understand that, but essentially it's mostly like paper cuts. So things that impact the user experience and makes it not great to use the system. Uh, and sometimes you, most of the time, we, we have got workarounds to, to make sure that, that things work, still work. So yeah, the general idea is, uh, yeah, we don't have a GUI for everything right now, and you still need to use the command line. So um, that's something good to know if you want to try Keynote. 
Um, so first, the flat packs. We don't have yet Kitty flat packs available. Um, we'll talk about that very soon, just after. Uh, we're missing uh, RPM OS3 supporting Discover. It's still in progress. Uh, some there are still some bugs, and we've got a big bug if you use uh, UTC time zone. It creates havoc on the desktop. So. Uh, Please don't use the UTC time zone for now. Just switch and uh, switch back later. Okay, so RPM is supported in Discover. It's it the, the initial support was made as part of a season of KDE uh, by a student, by um, an, uh, an Egyptian student, and uh, she she did a great work to get this started. But unfortunately, we still have like one big bug that that there, and I haven't been able to track it down. So. It's, it's still in progress. Uh, upstream is linked here, the, the work and the, well, the command line, you can still use the command line. It's not great, but it works perfectly from the command line. Uh, so what would it look like? So essentially you get this kind of things. So now when you, you open Discover, when I fixed this last bug, you will get the older version of Fedora Kinoa you have installed on your system, the packages you have layered on top, and you can just get updates. Uh, directly and apply them from Discover. So this should work once uh, the bug is fixed. Flat packs. Uh, so essentially, we we have flat pack support built in, and uh, we just don't have any KD application built on the Fedora uh, on the Fedora infrastructure. So you you've got already all the Fed, on the non KDE applications that are available in Fedora. You can install all of those and they just work. Uh, but uh, the KDE apps themselves they are not yet available in as Fedora flat packs. So uh, we're still working on that. Um, I hope and I, I think I've got good hope that uh, we should be able to bring that during the Fedora certified release. It's not a breaking change, so uh, it's just adding packages uh, into the remote. So it's fine. Once we've got figured out the, the, the few bugs that are blocking us here, uh, things should progress much more quickly because we already have a lot of KDE apps available. But that's not really blocking right now. If you're comfortable for, uh, with using flat packs from FlatHub, you can just install Zeus. You've get a lot of non KDE applications too from FlatHub. You can get everything. Uh, and uh, we're quickly trying to bring a lot of KDE applications to FlatHub. And essentially, uh, what I try to do when I package applications is do flathead first, uh, make sure they work well, uh, push uh, the fixes upstream, and, and when everything is upstream and, uh, and updated, and then I'm, I work on the, on the on the one in, in Fedora. So this is mostly most probably what will happen next for applications. And FlatHub is also a great place to fix uh, application close to upstream because it's it's really close. It's uh, using latest tables and everything. So usually it makes it easy to develop and, and, and fix on things. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of easy tasks if you want to get started with either Flatpak, uh, key development, or packaging. It's um, it, it's quite easy to get started and low 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 effort, low involvement. I would say the fixing a bug sometimes takes is difficult, but the, to get started, it's it's rather easy and and doesn't need to be uh, and can get you started with both KDE development, Flatpak packaging, and things like that. All right, so that's about like what's coming like really really soon and uh then i'll get a brief discussion about what's coming like in the future so long more long term future maybe if it were such a six we don't have a specific timeline with still things we're working on so uh the, the main plans are that we want to make this the best platform to try the next version of either kde plasma kd plasma or the application so for that, we have to make sure that we want to bring like the latest, either the latest Git uh, release branches uh, directly as packages, as something built and available as a remote in Fedora Kinoi, so that you could try daily builds of the KDE Plasma desktop directly on your system uh, without having any issue. So if you like, hit a measure of one, you can just roll back to the previous version and keep working. And at the same time, we want to make this better for uh, KDE applications to bring them from upstream development, nightly builds as flat packs directly on your desktop too, uh, so that you can try them and keep their stable ones installed as well. So that you keep all the stable ones, you have the nightly ones on the side and you can try them, report bugs, develop everything. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so to make that, we'll try, uh, what we want to do uh, is uh, make um, a different stream of Kino, right? So right now we have one stream per major Fedora release, so one branch uh, per Fedora uh, release, and we'll probably create a new one, which is which would be based on stable Fedora, but with the latest KD stuff. So you will get like, the, both things, uh, the benefits of both, like trying new federal, new KDE with the stable Fedora base so that we don't shift everything at the same time, just like raw hide essentially shifts a lot of things at the same time. So it's sometimes difficult to track and difficult to use for, for testing just a single part of the system. And, uh, and this would be interesting because you would have just like KDE plasma being unstable in a sense and the, the base keep being Fedora stable classic. And yeah, this would be really interesting for early adopters. So here it is. So one last thing we're missing is a logo. We still don't have a logo. So if you have any art skills, uh, feel free to join and feel free to drop by. Uh, we, we would uh, really uh, appreciate that. And uh, feel free to join us. So at the KDC, we meet on Mondays on uh, 18 uh, Android UDC. And uh, we track all of the issues in the, the in the Kali Seek Tracker, KDE Seek Tracker. Um, we have a website now, which is uh, nice, thanks to Carl, and uh, and some docs, which need a, need a little bit of love, even if they are like should be functional right now. And uh, yeah, and that's about it for the demo. And are there any questions right now? Otherwise, well, not for the demo, that's it for the presentation. Now I can do a demo. Uh, and there are questions. I don't see questions. Did I miss something or? Thanks. Uh, okay, so let's share my screen and let's see what I can share. Oopsie, yay. All right, so right now, this is my laptop running Fedora Kinoid. So if I go there and type RPM OS3 status, which is the classic way of uh, with using RPM S3 to get the status for your, your system. So uh, you don't see my pointer. It's a shame. Oh, yeah, you can see the highlight at least. So yeah, so essentially we're running Fedora and the latest release of Fedora 35 here. You've got the version there. And I've got, so um, I said that RPM S3 manages the system as an image. So essentially when you update the system, it updates the whole system, a whole set of packages as an image, and then you move from version to version. So that's the version number you've got there, here. And on top of that image, you can still install packages. So you're not locked into the image and you can change things. You can either, you can either remove packages or add new packages, and which is, which is what I've done here. So I have a bunch of layered packages here on top, which, uh, which I use frequently. So I've added them to the image directly uh, to be able to do certain things. Uh, and yeah, the, the common tools that I use. And then you've got the rollback deployment, uh, as we call it. So essentially, you usually have always two versions of the system available at once on the system. So it's just like Fedora Silverblue. Uh, you, you get two when you update. The, the previous one, the latest one, gets cleaned up, uh, garbage collected. And, uh, and, the, and the one you were running gets pulled back at the previous deployment. And so if I do an update, essentially, I will get a new deployment here. So if I go ahead and type sudo rpm3 upgrade, up. essentially, I will be pulling the new version and deploy that. So that should be, should be fairly rather quick. We'll see uh, if it's too long. Yes. 
while it's deploying, let's keep moving on. So yeah, RPM is three status. Um, what can I show you next? Uh, so yeah, so for those who are not familiar with how RPM three system work, essentially, uh, yes, I don't have to use sudo with RPM three for all the operations, but I'm I'm used to doing that, so <laughs> sometimes I forget. Uh, yeah, the 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 file system is laid out a little bit different. So uh, maybe not. Yes, but okay, this one. So essentially, we'll have uh, slash user being read only here. And uh, and the system slash here being still read only, but it's planning to I'm planning to update that to be a read write, but planning to update that to be read only. And slash boot is still read write right now, but hopefully we'll make it read only too, just like slash boot UFI should be read only. And that's the main difference. Uh, so you know oh, it's still running. So yeah, you, I've got a bunch of flat packs installed. So if you look at the flat packs I have right now installed my systems, I got a good chunk of them. I've got the GNOME Builder, the uh, game boxes, uh, I think like that, Slack, uh, a lot of things. Uh, other key applications, all of them, most of them are for flat hub because right now uh, most of those are available there. Okay, how will, how will you running the update? So yeah, so I'm looking at the update and this is both at the same time, updating the system and updating all the packages that I've overlaid. So this takes a little bit of time. It's much faster when you only have just the image because it does, RPM industry doesn't have to do all the work for, for you and uh, you can just move to new ones. But here I've got both the image and packages, so it has to do both and regenerate and minitron first and, and, and things like that. So it takes a while. Do, do I still have questions? Yeah, I do have questions. Okay, if I had to pick one thing that I need help with right now, what would it be? Um, I would say uh, flat packs, because right now what we're missing the most on the system is flat packs. Uh, so we don't have flat packs as built by Fedora and Fram, and it still needed a little bit of debugging to figure out why they don't build on the, as flat packs. And uh, any help, uh, any application that you like, that you want to see, uh, be in Fedora via the Flatpak, either in Flathub or in Fedora. Uh, feel free to reach out and, and try to work on it because like packaging uh, KDE application from Flathub is not difficult usually. And what's like missing usually is like a little bit of tweaking or some fixes, uh, small fixes in, in, in upstream uh, packaging, in, in upstream sources to make this better, work better with Flatpaks. And that's where... Um, where we would really benefit from the help. So the other question is, what this question? Yes, you can do. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so you can either, if you want to run KD application right now, you can either, you have three options, essentially. You can either um, get them from Flathub if they are there. Uh, you can install them in Toolbox and run them uh, directly from the outside. From the Toolbox, it should work mostly because the Toolbox essentially has access to all the things usually some Flatpaks application have, even more, uh, most of the time. and. The third option is directly overlaying them on the system using RPM OS3 uh, installed. So it's just fine. You will just get an overlay packages on top and just like a classic Fedora KD installation, you will get the application and uh, it will be available. So when I should I use uh, a package as layered package versus toolbox? So it depends on the, it very much depends on what the application do. Uh, so sometimes 
uh, if you want to have the application modify things, uh, access things on the host or things like that, you will have to uh, use them as low-level packages. But most of the time, you can run them uh, from toolbox and they will work just fine, and which is like a not really nice not fully fully there yet, but it just works, and uh, and, and that solves most of the issues, uh, especially the availability right now. But yeah, it's I would say try Toolbox first, and if things break, uh, add them as a novel package because it's much faster. One one thing to note is so right now I've finished the update right now here, and so it updated a bunch of packages. I won't reboot because essentially you won't. I, this will leave me out of here, so I don't want that to happen. Uh, but yeah, if I go and see the status, you will see we have got three versions now. And the next one is just right here, waiting for me to reboot to get into it. Yeah, it's usually it's better to try with Toolbox because uh, running them in Toolbox uh, it's just free, essentially. You don't get any issues. Uh, but as you can see here, we've got a bunch of I've got a bunch of applications there, and most of the KD applications aren't really special, so you can just overlay them, and it will be fine. So, uh, overlaying packages is fully supported. It's just not always as convenient. And one thing I want to point out is that you can do RPM3 uh, install and then dash dash uh, live. Dash dash apply live, apply live like this, and use specified packages. So let's say I want to add a trace, and what this will do is it will install a package and switch the currently running version of the system with the version with this package temporarily. So you will get this in the next reboot and in the current boot. So you don't have to reboot every time you install one package. Uh, you can do that live now. It's a new feature in RPM history. Keyboard mappings or macros. So essentially, what's what's in slash home? So it's var home on RPM3 systems uh, is untouched by RPM3. So anything you have in slash var home, so all your home directory is completely untouched by RPM3, and you 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 won't get anything changed. If you want to move from let's say LibreOffice configuration that you have right now into the one used by a Flatpak you will have to copy to import it into the right places because this won't get auto-imported. All right, I'm eating the, the mark for this session, so thanks everyone. Uh, I hope this was a nice, gives you a nice introduction uh, of what we've done here. And uh, yeah, see you shortly and see you in the KDSync meetings if you wanna help. Thanks, everyone.